Hi, we are here today to talk about the Nernst equation, which plays a central role in electrochemistry and batteries. You need to know it. It was put together by Walter Nernst, the great German physical chemist who was a Nobel laureate in 1920. And Nernst is the scientist who primarily put together the theoretical underpinnings of electrochemistry. And we're very, very grateful for that knowledge. Now the Nernst equation, which Nernst, of course, proposed, is used to calculate cell potentials when we're at non-standard conditions. Well, to understand what that means, we have to review what we mean by standard conditions. And in electrochemistry, when we're talking about standard conditions, we mean that the cell is operating at 25 degrees Celsius, and all of the solutions in the cell are one molar. Of course, we're not always at those conditions. And with the Nernst equation, we can find out what the cell voltage would be. It has a lot of applications. It allows us to predict uh, what will happen to the voltage of a battery over time. We can also explain nerve conduction by looking at the Nernst equation. So let's go and actually look at the equation itself. And here it is. I've actually got it in two different forms, but they both really say the same thing. E cell. The cell, condition, the cell voltage at non-standard conditions is equal to E naught of the cell at standard conditions from your standard reduction potential sheet minus RT over NF times the ln of Q. All right, all kinds of stuff there. R is the universal gas constant. T, of course, is the temperature in Kelvin. N is the number of electrons transferred in the balanced equ equation. And F is Faraday's constant. And Faraday's constant is equal to 96,500 coulombs for moles of electrons. All right, and then we have Q. Now, you might remember from, from your uh, equilibrium unit that Q is the ratio of products over reactants at a particular moment in time. All right, so we're looking at these ratios here. All right. Now, if we're working at 25 degrees Celsius, we can actually simplify the Nernst equation a little bit. So E cell is equal to E naught minus 0 0.0592 over n. So we've taken all the constants. R, T is 298 Kelvin, S is a constant, uh, and put them all together. And we've also converted from the natural log to the common log. And we've put all the constants together. That's where the 0 0.0592 comes from over n, which is still the number of electrons transferred, um, times the log of Q, where Q is still the ratio of products over reactants. Either way, you can use this equation. And for AP Chem students, these formulas are on your formula sheet. Now, there is one really interesting application that comes out of the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation tells us that we can make a concentration cell. We can build a galvanic cell with the same substance in both half cells if the concentrations of the solutions in those half cells are different. And that's what we've shown here in the left-hand picture. All right, we have two half cells, both containing nickel and nickel-2 ions. But in the left-hand cell, we've got a very dilute solution. And in the right-hand cell, it's a one molar solution. So although we have the same substances in the half reactions, we have E0 being equal to 0. But the ratio of products over reactants is not. And so we do get a positive E cell. And this cell will run. At um, its voltage until eventually the concentrations are equal, at which point E cell will go to zero. But we can run an electrochemical cell with the same thing on both sides, as long as we watch our concentrations. Isn't that interesting? I, I really like concentration cells. Let's go on and look at a typical problem that would require you to use the Nernst equation. We're going to create a voltaic cell using cadmium in one half cell and tin in the other half cell. You do want to make sure that you uh, get the right half reaction. So this is cadmium to cadmium 2, and this is tin 2 to tin. 
which, of course, can make a difference um, if you don't have the right half reaction. We need to write out the balanced equation, which means we need to know who gets oxidized and who gets reduced. So if you look at your standard reduction potential sheet, I found the cadmium half reaction at minus 0 0.40 for reduction, and the tin half reaction, to find the tin 2 to tin 0 half reaction, is at minus 0.14. Well, the one that's higher, all right, minus 0.14 versus minus 0.4, all right, we're going to uh, keep the one that's higher, which would be the tin half reaction. And we're going to flip the other one. What we're saying here is that the tin half reaction is happening at the cathode, because that's where reduction occurs. And the cadmium half reaction is occurring at the anode. But both reactions that we have on the standard reduction potential sheet are both um, reduction reactions. So we need to flip the anode half reaction. All right, so what I get is that reduction occurs at the tin ion, so tin 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives me tin. And this has an E naught of minus 0.14 volts. But the cadmium half reaction is an oxidation half reaction. because it's now an oxidation half reaction, I would change the sign of the E naught to be plus 0 0.40 volts. And so E cell is equal to plus 0.26 volts, which, of course, it needs to be positive if I've made a galvanic cell. And my overall equation is tin 2 plus plus cadmium gives me tin metal plus cadmium 2 ion. Notice that the electrons do cancel out in my net ionic equation, and I'm totally ignoring the presence of any, any uh, spectator ions. All right, and I ask, what is the cell potential at 25 degrees if the cadmium ion concentration is 0.5 molar initially and the tin 2 concentration is 0.30 oh molar? Well, to do this, we need to use the Nernst equation. And I'm going to use this, the version that's simplified at 25 degrees. All right, so E cell is equal to E naught minus 0 0.0592 over N times the log of Q. All right, so we have a couple of things to do. We've already found E naught. E naught is pl plus 0.26. And because we wrote out the balanced equation, we know that two electrons were transferred in this and that means that n is equal to 2. All right. So minus 0 0.0592 over q. And we have to do the log of q. Well, q is product over reactants, which would and uh, in equilibrium as you recall, we don't include solids in the equilibrium constant. So it would be the cadmium ion concentration over the tin ion concentration. All right, so the log of Q becomes 0 0.50 over 0 0.30, which gives me a ratio that's larger than 1. So the log of that will be larger than 1. So when I go and do the whole calculation in the second part of the Nernst equation, I'm going to be subtracting that value. And so I'm going to end up with E cell that's smaller. When I do out all my math, I end up with an E cell equal to plus 0.25 volts. All right, so if the if Q is larger than 1, E cell will be less than E naught and vice versa. If your Q ratio is, is, oops, I wrote that wrong. If your Q is less than 1, the E cell would be greater than E naught. So that's a handy thing to remember. Um, those kinds of questions do show up sometimes where it's not about just plugging the numbers but understanding the concepts as well. I hope you found this helpful. We'll talk another time.